Thank you, Bill. Appreciate that. Range weather. Launch weather has no constraints to launch. Thank you, Kathy. Atlanta flow director. Yo, Darius Pitt here, and this is video editing for absolute beginners. There are a lot of different editing applications out there, but if you're completely new to the concept of editing, you might want to start off with something insanely simple. I was going to show you guys Window Movie Maker, but it looks like the program is no longer available. It's joined the big hard drive in the sky. So we're gonna take a look at Shotcut instead. It's free, it's stupid simple, and it's a great starter application for editing. If you're making videos for a business, a YouTube channel, a skit, or film, you can get a lot out of this program. You can use Shotcut for Windows, Linux, and Mac. Let's get into it. Interface. When you first fire up Shotcut, your screen's gonna look like this. First, we need to enable the timeline and then the playlist. This is our timeline here. We can add video and audio tracks by clicking the menu button. And this is our playlist where we can navigate through all of our media, and lastly, this is our program window. Importing. Let's add some clips. At the top left of the screen where it says open file, click it and find your media. Boom. From here, you can just drag it onto the timeline. Here's another way to import clips. You can just drag and drop them into your playlist and then into the timeline. We can list view our media or checkerboard it. If we want to see more details about the clips, there's also a detail view. We can resize the elements using these sliders here. If we double click on any clip, it'll appear in the program window where we can scroll through it. Editing. We can zoom in and out of the timeline by hitting the plus or minus key or using the magnifying glass slider. We can move the clips anywhere we want on the timeline by just clicking, holding, and dragging them. When you use the snapping tool, you can join clips together easily. When you're near another clip, it'll just snap into place. We can split a clip with the split at playhead button. This makes a cut wherever the playhead is located, or you can just press S shortcut. Does the same thing. If we want to remove a clip, we can right click on it and then select remove. Or we can just click on the clip and press delete. To undo an edit, press Ctrl Z. Transitions. Here's one stupid easy way to add a cross dissolve. Just grab a clip and drag it over another clip. Boom, you got a cross dissolve. Speed. We can increase the speed of a clip by selecting the clip and select properties. In the properties tab, you'll see speed, change it, and press enter. Boom! Just like that, you got speed. Title. To add titling, select a clip, go to filters, press the plus button and select text or 3D text. We'll look at 3D text. Boom. We got text, write what you want. Let's change the font. Let's pick a color, hmm, we'll do this one. We have a few sliders here that control lots of things, run through the sliders, play around with it. Okay, we'll take this off and look at another one. Let's add a regular text. Go ahead and type what you want in the box. If we grab the edges of the box here, we can resize the text field. Let's pick a font. We'll make this one bold. I guess we can adjust the thickness, pick a color. Blue's nice. We'll do that one. I like this one. We'll do that. We can adjust the text left or right or center. Also the same with the vertical top, middle and bottom. Boom. So we got text. Audio. If you've got voiceover, you can import that as well. We got to create a new audio track, then just drag it underneath the clips. Darius Britt here, and this is video editing for absolute beginners. There, You can do the same thing with the music. Let's add some tunes. Yo, Darius Britt here, and this is video editing for absolute beginners. There are a lot of different editing applications out there. Boom. Okay, the music is too loud. Let's adjust it. To adjust the audio levels, we're going to need our peak meter first. See there, now we can see our levels. New to this concept of editing, you might want to start off with some. You can mute a track. We're going to go ahead on and mute the voiceover track here so I can focus on just the music. Let's adjust the volume on the entire audio track. Make sure that the track is selected, and then under filters, hit the plus button and select the gain and volume. Adjust the slider wherever you see fit. I'm just going to nudge mine back this way a little bit here. Booyah. You can also do this with individual clips up. as well. Just select the clip and then add the gain volume filter to it. Okay, we're going to go ahead on and get the voice over around like negative 12. Completely new to this concept of editing, you might want to start off with something insanely simple. 
color grading. We need to have a clip selected first. Hit the filters button again, hit the plus button. You'll find color grading, select it, and then just go to town. We can adjust the brightness as well. Booyah. There are actually all types of video filters you can find and apply in here. Film look, etc., etc. Just go take a look in here and play around with stuff. Get familiar with it. Green screen. We can also do green screen work. Let's take some footage that needs some keying. We're gonna need to add another video track. Okay, we're gonna have to rotate it. We can use a rotate filter. Get it oriented correctly. Now select the actual clip and head to filters. Select the chroma key simple. The default is green, but you can select whichever color needs keying. Now if we adjust the slider here, we can see if this takes care of it. That's that's really that's really close. It's a little rough, but we could clean this up a little bit, but you know, I mean, there are some advanced chroma keying options in this program. I'm not really gonna get into all that with you guys. I just wanna keep this simple rendering. We can click the little disc icon up at the top. We can select a format from the presets. Let's go with H.264 high profile. I'm gonna go ahead and go with the MP4 resolution 1920 by 1080. Pick whatever resolution your footage was shot in. The frames per second should match the original video. This should be auto detected. I shot all my footage in 60 frames slow motion, so I actually need to change mine to 23976, but you won't have to do that, so don't worry about it. Make sure your scan mode is in progressive. We do not want interlaced. In the codec tabs, set rate control to quality based variable bit rate. Simple answer, it gives you the best bit rate. Let's up the quality from 60 to 70%. It's just better. Okay, everything else in here looks good. When you're all done, hit export, select a destination folder, and then boom, you'll see the project rendering off to the right here under jobs. Hashtag booyah. Most people tend to think of editing as basically just cutting out the bad stuff, shaky footage, parts where nothing's happening, out of focus shots, but it's so much more than that. The real power of editing isn't just about what you remove, it's what you leave in. It's about pacing, it's about rhythm, it's about selecting the best performance that moves the story forward, and sometimes the best choice isn't the obvious one. Well, that's all that I got for you. If you enjoyed what you saw, please like, oh, subscribe. Thank you for watching. Deeper out. They would make a total of six stops on this traverse, collecting samples from large rocks, <laughs>